Statistics and Excel. T distribution graph showing degrees of freedom. Get ready and some coffee because it's time to get realistic with statistics and Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, first a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunching numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Access three tabs down below. Example, practice blank. Example, in essence, answer key. Practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, the one we will be working on, as you can see, is blank. We'll construct this from a blank worksheet practicing our Excel tools as we build it. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be building. We're gonna be graphing curves related to a T distribution, emphasizing the difference in the shape of the curve when we change a crucial factor, that being the degrees of freedom. First question, when might we use a T distribution, which as you can see, looks like a bell-shaped normal curve, but it is slightly different, typically having fatter tails at the end. So when might we use this versus say using a normal distribution? Remember our general statistics scenario is often where we're trying to find information about a large population. We can't test every item within that large population. Therefore, we wanna take a sample of it, test the sample and see whether or not we can apply the results of the sample to the larger population. There's two ways that we might look at that. One is through a hypothesis testing situation and the other is with confidence intervals. Now the hypothesis testing often works quite well if we have a situation where we already think we know at least what the middle point is, meaning the mean or the average of the population and possibly we wanna set up a scenario to take a sample and determine whether or not that assumption is correct. In other words, do we have enough evidence from the sample to determine or reject the original kind of null hypothesis? Now, remember, the other thing we have to keep in mind is possibly the data that we are looking at will tend towards a bell shape if we're talking about heights or weights or error situations about a, a project projections or predictions. Those tend to be bell shaped. If they're not bell shaped, the data skewed to the left, skewed to the right, or so on, we might be able to use the central limit theorem in order to then think about all possible, uh, all possible combinations of whatever sample size we are taking and take the average of all that uh, and the standard deviation of it will tend towards basically a bell-shaped uh, type of curve. So that's one scenario. Another scenario with the confidence intervals might be used more often when we don't have an assumption what the middle point is. That's what we're looking for. What do we think maybe the middle point is and what are the, the confidence level of, of that basically that uh, prediction. So in that situation, we might still have the standard deviation. If we still have the standard deviation of the population, which is the measure of the spread, but we don't know what the, the, the mean is, we might be able to do a, a similar kind of, of scenario using the normal uh, distributions because we have that spread number uh, that we can use. Uh, so we can basically use the normal distributions to come up with, in essence, a confidence interval. Now also just remember with the confidence intervals, you can kind of think about the confidence intervals two different ways. You can think, as though you're basically constructing a hypothesis test, meaning uh, 
if you take a sample and you're going to say this is the middle point of the sample, we're going to we're going to see how likely is that going to be the middle point of the actual population. And you could say, well, whatever that middle point is of the sample, I'm going to assume the point next to it is the actual population. And if the point next to it was the actual po population, that's like my hypothesis, then would it still be valid? Would that hypothesis be rejected given the sample that I took? And if, it's, if, if the original still has a tail that is within here, it's still within the bulk of the graph, then we would, we would not reject it, right? Well, what if, what if the actual population was somewhere over here and this is what I, and I got something over here. Well, then the tail of the actual one might start to get into the, to the, to the tail part, in which case we would reject it if the sample came out there and we can come up to our, our intervals by saying, I'm going to take all the ones that were rejected. It would be peak to peak versus having the peak in here and then looking at the middle point. Now, obviously that's kind of a tedious way to look at it. What we would like to be able to do and say, I want to build a, a graph around the middle point that I have found and see if I can then just use my confidence intervals. And if we, by basically, by the same way we basically would here by saying the, the area under the graph and be using our normal formulas. Now, again, if we have the standard deviation, we can, in essence, do that with the bell-shaped curve. But if we don't have the standard deviation of the population, uh, that's when we might have to deviate to this to the T distributions. So basically, the idea with the T distributions is they've kind of figured out based on the degrees of freedom what the proper size of the graph is, which still looks bell shaped, but it's a little bit fatter here based on basically these d degrees of freedom to give us the, the best results. So it used to be you'd have to look up these different graph shapes in the book, uh, in, a, in, a, in a book, right, related to the degrees of freedom, but now Excel can basically do it. So we wanna have like a theoretical idea of what's happening. We're picking up a curve that looks bell-shaped, but it's got fatter tails and the curve that we're picking up will actually be different based on the degrees of freedom and the degrees of freedom will be based on the sample count uh, that we'll be picking up. Now, this is typically going to be used in situations where the are, the actual data that we're looking at possibly still tends towards a bell-shaped type of distribution. So, like something like heights or weights, uh, or the length of a worm. <laughs> you know, the errors and stuff like that, and where the sample is going to be relatively small. And the reason it's for the sample that's relatively small is because when the sample starts to get relatively large, then it's going to tend towards to be more like the normal distribution, which, mean, which means we might be able to use more of the normal distribution at that point. So those are the characteristics. We're usually looking like at a confidence interval type of situation generally where we don't know the middle point and possibly the standard deviation. And we have a fairly small sample uh, and we, we, uh, the, the data is going to tend towards like a bell shaped curve. That's when we might use the T distributions and they look similar to what we would be doing with the normal distributions, but they're a little bit more wonky kind of to work with. All right. So the practice tab has some pre-formatted cells. So you can work this with less Excel formatting, but we'll just build this from the blank tab. Let's select the entire sheet up top, selecting the triangle, right-clicking, formatting the cells as we typically do. I'm going to go to the currency, negative numbers bracketed, red, no dollar signs. Let's get rid of the decimals to start off with, adding decimals as we need. And OK. I'm going to go to the Home tab, Font Group. Let's put some borders around it. I mean, some, some bold. <laughs> bold. Now, you don't need the bold possibly, but I do it for the screen recording uh, so because it might be easier to see on a screen recording. So we're going to say that the components we need is going to be N, which is equal to the sample count. So the sample size is going to be N. And then we've got the DF. DF is going to be standing for the degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom. And so, so 
if we have, we have two different scenarios that we're going to run here, and we're going to run the first one with we'll, we'll start off and be able to change these degrees of freedom and sample count, but we'll start with a you know really low sample count, and then the degrees of freedom is equal to the sample count minus one. That's how you calculate the degrees of freedom. Uh, there we might get into later uh, how exactly uh, you you might look at that degrees of freedom uh, number. Uh, and where they derived that, but for now, that's going to be the idea of it. So that's as, it's as simple as that. We're just going to say if it was at 100, the degrees of freedom is going to be 100 minus one. All right. So then let's go ahead and graph this thing. So let's put it over here. I think is where we put it. So uh, we could do a dynamic, a dynamic header. So we can say let's do a dynamic header and say equals. Uh, n, I'm going to put quotes around it. If n equals, and then we'll put this number up here. If, if n equals, well, let's put a end the quote, and then I'm going to put an and so I can tie it to if n equals let's, two. Let's put the two here. Uh, and then I want to put a space, so I'm going to put an and one and quotes space quote and then another and to tie it to the uh, df degrees of freedom let's put it put a quotes df uh, is going to be equal to end quotes and then I'm going to say and and tie that out to this one all right enter all right so that's a fancy way to put this in here which will change as we change this now so now it's there we have it it's cool all right and then so let's make that our header i'll make it black and white we're going to go home tab font group we'll make it uh black and white and then i'm going to then do our count so i'm going to go from negatives now we're kind of thinking about these as though they're similar to like the z score but they're like the t right so we're like four standard deviations would count everything but I'm just going to go to three. So three, three out. So I'm going to go from negative three, negative three, negative, uh, negative 2.99. I'm going to add some decimals and then I'm going to bring that all the way up to positive three. So I'm going to copy this down. We could use a sequence would probably be a better way to do it than this, but I'm just going to copy it down because we've got the nice number counter and we can do it. It's not too bad. So we'll say, boom. So negative to positive three. All right. And then let's actually center this across. Now you could do this by going to merge cells, but I don't like doing that because then I, I have these merge cells when I'm looking at columns. So I'm going to undo that and I'm going to select these two cells, right click. And then I want to format the cells alignment. And then on the horizontal alignment, I like to say, I want to center across selection and then okay. And then I'll make this font group black and white across the selection. Now there's two distinct cells still. The formula is in this cell, but I don't have them merged together. All right. So then we're going to do our formula here. So our formula is going to be a t.dist formula. So this is going to be equal to the t.dist. And so tab. And then our x is going to be this one. The degrees of freedom is going to be this one up here. I'm going to select F4 on the keyboard so I can copy that down and comma. Do I want it to be cumulative? No, not for our graph. So I'm going to put zero and enter. Then let's add some percents and decimals, decimalize it a bit and double click it down. Do -do. And then we'll go control shift down to the bottom. It went all the way down. Looks MUI B to the end. Let's make it blue and bordered let's do some formatting control shift down i like to go to the home tab font group select the bucket make it that blue if you don't have that blue it's in the more colors standard color wheel there's the blue boom okay and then i'll border it font group let's put some borders around it and then let's make this border blue as well border blue okay and then i'll make a skinny d well let's just graph this first let's graph this one so I'm gonna say control shift down, control backspace, and then I'm gonna insert a graph. Now you could insert, you know, a bar graph, 
you could do a line graph and you could do an area graph but we're going to actually do the line graph here because that's the easiest one to see if we have two different graphs on the screen i believe so i'm going to put a line graph i'm going to get rid of the title here because we want as much space to view the beautiful curve and the title just gets in the way man i'm trying to look at the curves baby Woo! those are some nice curves all right so then i'm going to go and then say chart that's going to put some data on it and then we're going to say let's go in here and we're going to say control shift down for the x boom boom i'm going to select here till it shows up boom there it showed up down here so we're going to say okay so notice when we graph these it's it's going to be kind of like a z test graph where the middle point is zero right so this is going to be at zero and then we've got an equal amount under the curve on the right and the left and you can see it looks like a bell-shaped curve it's got that bell shape but it's got a fatter tail to it now let's do the same thing but let's make now a uh, a curve uh that has let's make a skinny d that has 100 a 100 sample count giving us a degrees of freedom of 99. So I'm going to make this blue and bordered. And then I'll copy this over here. I'm just going to copy this and put it here. But then I'll go into it and it yeah, it picked it up perfectly. Okay. So then I'm going to do the same thing. This will be equal to, let's just say, this same numbers. And I'm just going to say, duh, duh. And then add, decimalize it. Boom, boom. And then we'll copy it down. Or I'll just drag it down. Oh, wait. I can't do it that way. Can I? Can I do it that way? Maybe it, it Oh, I can. It's doing fine. What you talking about? It's doing good. So I'll just copy it. I'll just keep on copying it down this way. Start from here. I'll just copy it down all the way down to match the other one. Have another one just like the other one. All right. So then we're going to say, let's make this one a little skinnier. Give me another one, just like the other one. Uh, and then we're going to say this is going to be equal to the T dot dist again. Tab. That's going to be the X comma. The degrees of freedom now is 99, though. F4 on the keyboard to copy it down. Comma. Do we want it to be cumulative? No. Therefore, zero. Close it up and then add some decim some percent decimalize it boom 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 and then double click copying it down all right i'm going to make that border blue put my cursor on it control shift down just to see that it populated all the way down and control backspace let's add that to our graph so i'm going to go to the chart design data and then we're going to say let's just go on add another one just like the other one but different it's not just like the other one it's going to be this one and then we're going to say it's going to be this side down control shift down control backspace i'm going to click on it till it shows up it's not showing up there you ain't doing it right there it is boom all right so there we go we've got it we have got it two beautiful curves lovely so we can see here that as we increase the degrees of freedom, it's going to get more, uh, more peaked and it's going to look more like a bell shaped curve. So what, what, why, what's the general idea here? So, so, so the, you can, you can get an idea of, well, if we're at a situation where we don't know the mean and we don't know, uh, the standard deviation, then you would expect that you might expect like a, a, a fatter curve like this that has more information in the tails. And that would mean that in order, if you wanted to still get 95% of the data, then you'd have to go further out into the tails because they're thicker on the outside. So you will recall that if you had a bell-shaped curve, this one is tending more towards like a normal bell-shaped curve, which is a little taller and skinnier. And we note that within two standard deviations then you have like 95 percent of the data and the tails are are holding on to less of it if you wanted to get 95 percent of the data on this blue one 
then you're going to go you're going to have to go out further than like two standard deviations because there's more data under the tails of the curve which makes sense if you're looking at a confidence interval because you would think that you would have to extend the confidence interval out more because you know less about the graph so that's kind of intuitively the idea of the t distributions right so we're looking at a t distribution we're trying to find a confidence interval but instead of using the bell-shaped curve which is kind of more peaked and tall they've made multiple t distributions based on the concept of the sample size and if you have a smaller sample size just intuitively it kind of makes sense that you would end up with something that's going to be more flatter have more meat in the curves more area under the tails because that would mean that you would need that larger that larger uh uh amount to to be picking them up the larger range more than two standard deviations wide and then as we have more information then you would think that that it would get taller and more peaked so again these graphs then we have to kind of depend on Excel to basically do them, right? Because they're, they're not all like the normal distribution, which all is just based on, you know, the two numbers and you have the, the one, the graphs that are going to be constructed from it. Here we have kind of different shapes of the graph, which used to be looked up in tables, but now are, can be generated by Excel with the degrees of freedom calculation that we're that we're pulling up but of course we have to know when we would use it and how we can intuitively understand it so so in other words if i was to keep on making this one go up to like 1000 this is the orange curve notice it didn't go up barely at all right if i go to like 3000 so it's already kind of at its at its maximum looking similar to like a bell-shaped curve way down here at like 100. that's why we're talking about usually relatively smaller sample sizes where we don't know you know the standard deviation and typically those that are going to have a, a a population of actual data population data that might tend towards a bell shape this one if i increase this to like five you can see it's it starts to move up rapidly towards this more peaked one if i go to 10 you know it's getting pretty close 20 so there we, we're almost matched up at 20. So we're looking again at the, kind of the smaller sample sizes. If this brings back down to five, uh, what did I say? Two, it's about as low as you can go right there, right? Uh, so that's gonna be, so that's the idea with the T distribution. So we'll take a look at possibly some examples in the future with the T distributions. Just note that they're a little bit wonky because basically you, you usually have to graph it around like this zero point so we'll kind of play with that we'll play with those in the future in future example problems